It's Linda McPhee's workshop. Here's Linda. Hi, and welcome to my workshop. You'll see that we've changed our show a little bit. We brought you right into the nitty-gritty, the workshop, where we meet all kinds of interesting people. You know, I love to get people inspired and get them doing things, and that's really what this whole show is about, is to get you inspired. I love what I do, and I love to sew, and I love all kinds of textiles, and that's what we're all about at this show. So one of the interesting people that I came across was Cease, and you actually walked into the shop one day, and I said, okay, and then I said, how about being on the show, when she told me what she did, because Cease, you're a hooker, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, tell me more. I'm a traditional rug hooker. I've been doing it for 15 years. Um, my mother-in-law started me. She was one of the old, oldest hookers in Edmonton, oh, okay. who uh, I think she probably hooked for 30 or 40 years. Yes. And they had, there was a group of them that started a guild in Edmonton, and, mm -hmm. which is carried on today. So well, the, you tell me, there's there's rug hooking guilds throughout the world and all yes. over, all over. That's I mean, right. This, you this can, is no just sort of basement, quiet little project. No, there's, that's growing. It's a craft that's really growing. The traditional rug hooking, and, yes. and that's wonderful to see because when I first started, um, I was one of the youngest of this mm -hmm. group, and mm -hmm. now I'm getting to be one of the oldest. <laughs> Okay, that's so, okay. Do you have a license plate that says hooker? Or no, yeah, no, I would no. like to, but I think it would <laughs> you be don't too do cool. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what you do. Um, well, this I brought as my. It's my mother, one of my mother-in-law's pieces. She this is passed what away. You to begin this with. is yeah. what inspired me, and mm -hmm. this is what a real traditional rug, and that means that she used fabric strips cut, probably old jackets, old stuff, yes. old pants, yeah, yeah. That's and. What the, um, yeah. That's what it was all about in the olden days. Okay, then let's go to some brights. This is more of a newer thing. This uh -huh. was a, a pattern that was printed, and uh, we did a workshop on this, taught a workshop. And this is all dyed with uh, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, neat, cool. So you can get the bright colors. That's uh -huh. the brightest way and of getting And when we're talking about patterns, there are patterns for these, but you can also, of course, yes. do your own patterns. Yes, uh -huh. I like to do my own thing a lot. Sure. And this one this demonstrates one thing, that, of course. It, it's uh, my family rug. Um, I wanted to do one that showed my children and my husband, my do my pets, and all the things, all the sayings that I nagged my kids about over the years. Like every, when they went out the door, yeah. I'd say think and. Uh, so nice. you don't put this on the floor. This is a wall. Or well, it's this, on a floor that's a low traffic special, area. Special yes, yeah, yeah. and the Smarties are my favorite yeah. candy. Okay. Right. This, is, this uh, is just gorgeous. This is a very, uh, this is an oriental pattern, uh -huh. um, and I, t I, did, I took a workshop in Nova Scotia where it's so wonderful there for rug hooking. Okay. And by the, a guru sure, of, sure. of yeah. oriental yeah, no, rug hooking. They've been doing this for, for mm -hmm. centuries. And this is, uh, when you see the, the fineness of this, it, it, we cut the wool in strips that are, the narrower you cut them, the, the lower the... You, okay. you, How do you, I judge a good rug then? Just that these just are all even, even hooking, and that they're all yeah. straight? But the ones that aren't have some character because yes. they have depth. Yeah. Um, but the, the narrower the cut, the lower the nap. Okay. So that's why it looks finer. Okay. When you see a wider cut one All like right. this, you'll see that it's 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 thicker. Sure, sure. That was one of my own designs well, I just, as well. This is my very, very, very favorite. <laughs> and you said this is self-portrait. This is my self-portrait. It will be passed on to my daughter as her portrait because sure. she has yeah. hair like that. That too. is just wonderful. Yeah. I'll have to get one of those for... That was fun Anyway, let's see what you start with. So let's... Okay. You've got me hooked. So, okay. So let's see what you do. And here's all the stuff that you work with. This, okay. is, this is the wool pieces. We usually start with the white wool if we're dying. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really doing the traditional hooking, we scrounge at goodwill. Uh, this value is about village. the weight. That's about so, the weight, yeah. Mm -hmm. The thicker the weight, though, you can, it'll be a thicker rug. Sure, sure. Um, these are old so skirts, old pants, old jackets. suits. So they're, sure. they're, we use them for the, the old um, primitive type okay. rugs. Okay. And if then you, you want to dye, dye yeah. you start with the white, or you can use other colors and over dye. There's so many techniques okay. of dyeing. Then how do I get them? I need to get them into little strips to hook. We have a cutter. Okay, let's do that. That uh, cuts the wool. Um, they ha it, this, there's different kinds of cutters. This one has two wheels on it mm -hmm. with two sizes of cuts. So okay. one's wider than the other. You just you move it back and forth. Okay. You you just put the wool into there again along the guide, and you turn the crank. Oh, I think we can do that. And it's like a spaghetti and cutter. And you said you are very you know, precise that it has to be on grain. Yes, we like, yes otherwise not. it yeah. shreds. And you want just little pieces like this? Yes. Sometimes they're a bit longer, but and then you're going long. to start with a base like this. It's usually burlap, or it can be linen, or uh, monk's cloth, or it's a cotton and you're backing. Going to 
draw your design or that's, have a design already printed on that's this? That's one that's printed already, yes. Okay, so that's what we need. And then you need some kind of an implement, I bet. Yes, we have a hook that's very much like a crochet hook, but okay. it, with a handle on it. Let's see how it works then. And we'll just take a piece of this wool that I cut. Okay. This is called a hit and miss pattern. And your frame is something that looks like it's kind of a, yeah. It grips all, it with these teeth. Yeah. This is a, one of the state-of-the-art frames. It collapses, so it's oh, easy lovely. to carry around. So you can take your, yes. your frame take wherever it anywhere, you are. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So you tighten it up over the, over the, mm -hmm. the teeth. Mm -hmm. You hold it in your one hand, just like between your two fingers, right. and you pull, pull it up from underneath. So you bring up the end. That okay. anchors it so it's not going to pull out from underneath. Okay. And then as you're holding it, you, you go into the holes and you pull it up in the loops. Not every loop, but you skip some and then it just sort of, it's like paint by number. You fill it in. Yeah. And you decide where you want what color. That's what right. What do you do with this end then? At Does the end, you trim that right down to the, okay. to the side. Yeah. Okay. And, at the, and when you're finished, you pull the end up to, up to the front again. That anchors it. And, cut, and that cut that off. Do you put anything on the back to hold this, or no, no, okay, no, that holds it. Okay. Um, and and the, what the fun thing is when you use the plaids, you see how exciting they are. They turn out when you hook them. They, sure, they, yeah, they, you the get same. all the yeah. color. So to finish off at the end, you sometimes stitch it around or whip, we whip it. There's different ways of whipping it, uh -huh. and then we put a backing on it. Mm -hmm. There's a new way now that avoids the backing. This one is um, it, you just turn the, the burlap over to the back side yes. and then whip it again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is one I, I did design to demonstrate the dyeing, the different kind of dyeing. This was the tulip, a dip dye. It was sort of a painted dyeing. So, oh, perfect. And yes. then the daisy yes. was yes. the... So. Thank you. This is just... Now I'm hooked on hooking. And you said you can actually Good. do this on garments. Like, you've got people that do it on the lapels. Embellishment, and all embellishing that kind of thing. lapels yeah. or pockets. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's well, really see, quite thank you for coming and opening our world to this whole <laughs> whole world of hooking. So thank you so much. And You're you welcome. Know, when we come back, we're going to have another exciting... You won't believe it. So don't go away. <laughs> You know, one of the most often asked questions I get and email, people are forever wondering, asking, what kind of machine do I have? What kind of machine should I get? I want to get into the sewing. I haven't sewn for years or I've never sewn before. What kind of machine? So I want to answer that question. The perfect person to do that is Carol Todd. So I'm glad to have you here. And, and can you help us with that dilemma? Yes, I can. I'm glad to be here. This is, this is fun. Great. When you're buying a sewing machine, when you're out there looking for a sewing machine, buy quality. Look for quality number one. Okay? Quality is for sure because, I mean, quality in fabric, there's just mm -hmm. no point in, in not going with the best. I, I just think that's... And the second thing to be looking for is who you're buying it from. Mm -hmm. Buy it from your local sewing machine store. They have the knowledge. They are there to help you. They're going to back up the warranty. They're there when you need them. You're buying a little bit of a relationship with them because you're, you're going to start out sewing now or you're going to get back into sewing and you mm -hmm. want somebody there to help you take, take you through it. Sure, sure. And they can, they can, so you should go in with your fabric or in with, or should you, when you, when you go to the store, you then take your take, blue jeans you could, that you're trying you to hand. You can take or? some fabric with you. Uh, you might go for more than one visit. Perhaps go the first visit and take a look at the machines and come back with some fabric. What I think boggles people's minds is the array of different models within, uh, you know, there's just There's whole... oodles and oodles of them. There, yeah. There's lots of machines out there. So how do they know what they need and well, what they don't need? Well, that comes to my point number three. What you want to be looking for is your best features for the dollar that you're going to be spending. Right. And you can invest less than $500 into a machine all the way up to the sky's the limit. And the less than 500 will still work. I mean, that, that that's not the... They will as long as you're buying a quality yes. less than 500 Well, let's look Just at these like two because you said that I get the same quality in this machine as I do in this machine. This is a Husky Star. Okay. And this is not a European-made uh, machine. However, it is a very good made machine for the price it's at, which is the less than $500 mm -hmm. price point. Mm -hmm. And it has the features that are going to help you grow through sewing. Mm -hmm. You may want to leap into the European made machine, into the Husqvarna, and you're going to be spending a little bit more, but you're getting the same stitch quality with your uh, 
beginner part of that machine sure. as you are with the top of the top well, of the Well, I think it's just like any tool. I mean, would the husband buy the lesser saw or would he buy the full meal deal or whatever? I mean, he I'm not... He would buy the best that he could <laughs> yes. and the best features he could for yes. the dollar he's going and to spend. I think spend. it's women. Yeah. We women sort of think we have to make do with less or whatever. But I think if you're not Justify. sure... Justify. Justify is the word that uh, women sure use a lot. Yes, sure it is. Sure it is. But I think if you're not sure, this is a this is a really great place to start yes, it because, is. you know, maybe I'm not going to like this. Okay, so think about it in these terms. You can buy uh, this machine when you're looking right here. It has a lot of stitches on it, right? Mm -hmm. There's actually quite like a few there. There's a there. lot of stitches we on it. We can that. adjust yeah. the stitch width on it. We can adjust the stitch length on it. It has a needle threader on it. There's really quite a few features on the Husky Star. Sure, sure. And this would be great to give to your child or your daughter. As, 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 as you grow up as and you get that. As you grow, yeah. because, um, I mean, do men keep the same... You know, lawnmower all the time or whatever they it is. They collect. Yeah, well, we they have to collect, grow. We yes. have to get the bigger one, yeah. the bigger one. And so if you were, or your daughter mm. was, just starting out and sewing, this machine is going to take you through all of the projects. Excuse me, I should have said son, too, because my son has a sewing machine. Yes, so, we I mean, see obviously. lots of boys yes. in classes. It's so much fun to see them there. Sure it, it is. really is. Yeah. We have some projects, like the one there, it's right on the table beside you, that little purse there. That would be a really good beginner project for a young teenager or sure. a child could make it to carry crayons in mm. or, or whatever. This can basically be done on any basic sewing machine as long as you've got a good quality stitch. Okay. That's yeah, what you're sure, looking sure. for. And then if you're buying a machine with a good quality stitch, you can move up into doing quilting and all sorts of things. Okay, so at this entry level, you can certainly do... And I mean, you can do these fancy stitches that you've got around. We're doing as well. some applique and using some of the fancy stitches there. Sure, sure. Then you move along and you're getting more comfortable and you want to be doing more fancy stitches, right? So here's more fancy stitches. Right. We're adding more and we're using those stitches. But you see now it's going through heavy fabric, which also the Husky Star will do. Okay, okay. sure, sure. But you know, you could be a beginner sewer or someone getting back into sewing and want to, you know, you're going to be spending a little bit of time doing this. You're really enjoying it. You see your friends doing it. This is a sewing machine. You can buy a sewing machine and embroidery unit at really in very economical prices now. And, what I and think, do embroidery. What I think is the interesting thing, though, is that you think nobody else out there sews. The whole world is sewing. We just don't realize, you know, your next door neighbor has been sewing all their life or whatever. And yeah. People don't talk about this. And I think we need to get out and show people. There's hey. a sewing machine in every household. It's sure there is. are. It's unbelievable. The doctors and lawyers and the women and men oh. and bus drivers and truck drivers and everybody yeah, sews. It yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. The yeah. ladies I meet yeah. that are sewers. So they can go to any kind of degree. So, so this, you could be starting out completely starting out. I met a lady last week who's just brand new. She doesn't know what a bobbin is. Okay. Linda. Okay. That's how new she is. And, and she what kind of machine did she buy? She bought an embroidery machine. She bought a Husqvarna <laughs> Viking <laughs> embroidery machine. Actually, she bought the top of the line. She <laughs> bought the designer one. However. Sure. you could do that with the entry level in the sewing machine embroidery units. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, when you do buy something like this, can you then say after two years, you know, I think I want the next one. Can you trade it up? Absolutely. Sort of like that, like the I was so surprised when I found out you could do that just like you can with cars. Okay. You talk to your dealer when you're buying your machine because there's many dealers also that will um, allow you six months or three months or a month with your machine to say, oh, is this really the one for me or is the next one up the one I should have gotten because oh, I'm is... really going to get into this and yes. start doing yeah. big yeah. embroidery jackets yes. and all that yeah. kind of thing. And, and each machine has its own capabilities of what it does and then the next one up does just a little bit... More. A little bit more or a little bit differently. For example, yeah, there are machines that have a sewing advisor on them. So if you're new to sewing like and you don't know what seam yeah. overcast is, right? Yeah. You touch the button on the designer one over there that says seam overcast and it's doing a seam overcast for you. You touch the button saying stretch fabric or heavy denim. Okay. And it's doing so a seam overcast. This is not rocket science and this machines will do. Yeah. They'll tell you. They'll you know talk. where where we get to use our powers is in the creativity. Yes. And yes. the machines, I know this sounds funny, but the machines bring out the creativity in us. I didn't Absolutely. believe it until I no, did it. No, this is the most creative machine I could uh, the sewing machine is we're hooked. We're married. We're, that's it. I mean, that's it. That's it. So we've got to go, Carol. Thank you. But oh, I've got a fun. project coming up, and you're going to help me with it. Oh, great. What yes. fun. Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll be right back. Well, Carol, here's our project. Isn't that snazzy? We're calling it City Cats, and it's a oh. jacket with all these sophisticated cats all over wow. it. I think just kind of fun. That is the cat's meow, Linda. Oh, yes, it that is. That is stunning. Is. So let's get making it. Okay, this okay. is done in fleece, but we're going to show you all the, pro all the kinds of things That's that you could do. Great. 
And oh, I do so like to use, when I'm doing applique, I like to use a one-piece pattern. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, I mean, there's no fuss, one piece. no one-piece. No mess, no yeah. fuss. No fuss. So we just thought the simplest shape would be cats like this. Mm -hmm. So we've just taken a bunch of cats. And what I think is kind of fun is you can actually put a cat on the pocket and then cut this off and put the rest of the cat inside so the pocket. So that's how you got the peekaboo cat. Yes, yes, Very yes, nice. yes. Very nice. So the other joy, I think, is with this, is that always, and you know when you're going to turn that edge of fleece or when you're going to try and blend that pocket into the body, you know, you have to be good. Yep. But I'm saying, why don't we just put the cat right there? <laughs> no more worrying about the corners yes, yes, until yes. you're ready to worry about yes, corners. Yes, exactly. Very good. So, and we've got to do some tails. So we thought, well, mm -hmm. let's just put some tails on these cats. And, I mean, you can have the tails doing whatever. I mean, the cord does, you know, so... It flexes, it yeah. moves, and you can add glitz. So you could also put the tail up along that edge. If you got that edge done and you weren't quite happy with it, that's an easy place to put, put a cat over here so they've got a tail. Yep. And then put this tail up along here. And, of course... Sewing this cord on is kind of a piece of cake, too. Well, it can be. Yes. It can be. Remember when we were talking about machines and we were talking about buying a machine that fits sure. your needs? Mm -hmm. Well, when you're buying a quality machine, there's lots of accessories of it, as you know. There's yes. lots of, you know, all the feet yes. you have. Yes, but there is a wonderful... There's a recording foot that would just zip right along there sure. and stitch sure. that down. Do it. So yeah. that's basically what you're going to do, is sew all your cats on. So put your pockets on so that you can incorporate the cats into the pockets. So we'll just take this one out and... Oh, magic, we the have magic one. of TV, isn't that one? Yes, it is. And we did this one actually in cotton twill, so it doesn't have to be fleece. In fact, right. for a beginner project, and this could be a beginner project. I mean, yes. you don't have to start yeah. with the toaster cover or whatever. You can start with something that you're going to wear. Um, so we've cotton twill is actually a nice firm fabric, so that's what we used. Now, once we've got the cats all on, we're going to have to put the zipper on. And don't worry, the zipper, you get the zipper foot. It's, you know, as well as I do, there's not, not rocket science. So we've just sewn the zipper along that edge. This other edge, and it's going to be an exposed zipper, so this will then come out and top stitch like this. This other edge would go, and we'd flip the whole thing around like this, and the other edge would come at the same spot. So here is your other edge of your zipper. And you would pin this edge in, keeping everything lined up. And this is why people get mad at zippers. But don't you keeping... find that when ladies have done one zipper, then that's it? They're off to the races. Oh, yes. That, yeah. You just sort of get over that psychological... Yes, yeah. true enough. So you'd sew that part of the zipper in, so that is basically there. We're then going to put on the collar and the sleeve. And I would just say, let's not worry about sleeves. Sleeves, there's a top and a bottom. And there is an easing thread that you put in along to ease that in. This is a set in, but it's got very little ease, as you can see. So that works in quite beautifully. The shape of garments have changed, so that what we yes. used to do for set in sleeves way, way back then yes. is, is nothing like what we do yes, now. Yes, yes. No sleeves. Breeze. Yeah, and, and they just, you know, play with it a little bit, obviously, but, but just stitch it in and stitch the other one That's in. That's also where the fleece has a lot of give to it, oh, so that it's even lovely. easier. Yes, the even fleece easier. has a little stretch to it, a little yep. give to it. So you could use fleece, you could use this. Actually, the next one that we've got is this. done from Wool Melton. <gasps> and Wool Melton is oh, a beautiful fabric because yes, it's it so is. firm yeah. and it's not going to stretch. It's got all the properties of the cotton, but it's got the warmth, it's got lots of stuff. This is... Casual into classy. Yes. This is, yes. This is yes. So you can see that again, and these cats, of course, can curve. They can, their tails can do all variety of things. We haven't put features on the cats because I think you don't want to get into all that. This is oh, just I like that stylized. simple, yep. simple thing. Yep. So again, all of your scraps and all of your fun okay. things. So and we then had, you've just stitched them down. Yes, and we had, we had uh, hemmed it to begin with. So remember that mm -hmm. that is going to be a finished edge in there. So here it is with the collar on, and your zipper will not go into the collar. It will just go into this part. In fact, it might be better for us to bring the next one on, because jacket. the decision that you've got to make once you've done this is, are we going to line it or not? And certainly for the cotton one, you wouldn't have to line it. It's not really messy on no. the inside. It's not going to ride up. No, you would use... You know, you'd use matching thread, mm -hmm. so uh, there's really not a lot of mess here. The mess is really on the outside. But in case that you want to line it and you want just to feel it slips on a little nicely. Lining little always nicer. feels classy. Yeah, yeah. So this is what you would do then is cut out the entire lining. And I wouldn't put a heavy lining in this, although, you know, if it's a winter coat, I guess you could put a heavy lining. This is the non-stick polyester 
non-static, I mean polyester lining. So that's the perfect kind of thing to use for this. So really, when you're going to put this together, you'd put right sides together. I do have a lining all cut out on this. But I probably covered it up. Yeah, here we go. So you'd put one collar on the lining, one collar on the coat. The zipper is already sandwiched in there. We'd put right sides together and stitch. Just two identical pieces? Yes. Stitch, stitch down there. Right sides together, there. turn it inside out. Exactly. I mean, it's yeah. not rocket science. None no. of this sewing is. None, none of the sewing. No, and people think we're so clever. Well, we are. <laughs> well, we well, are. We clever. are. We use, we use our cleverness, though, for creativity. Yes. And the machines help us. Be, I yes. didn't believe they would, but they do help us be creative. The sewing machine is just... Remember uh, on the last series, we did a segment about the sewing machine stitches. And when we were looking at the machines, we were looking at uh, the sewing machine stitches oh, yes. you have and that you can go up to, yes. you know, like hundreds yes. and hundreds of yes. stitches. Yes. Remember we had a quilt that w the, for the applique, we used all of the decorative every stitches. Different stitch. Every yep. different stitch mm -hmm. was used in the applique. Mm -hmm. And I notice here that you've used... Um, zigzag in this particular case, but these could be the decorative stitches on the sewing machine. Oh, absolutely! This could be your sampler, and it can add a lot of depth. Actually, yeah, what it does yeah. is add different, different. Sure, it does. To in it. fact, this could Fine. be a quilt. Yeah. This could be a wall hanging. Yeah. This could be on your body. This could be wherever you want to put mm -hmm. it. Wearable, in this wearable case, art is actually it is one of the wearable phrases. Art. Yeah. So right sides together, all the way around. Then top stitch it so that you've got your zipper top stitched in. So it stays flat. Top stitch, top stitch around your. Leave the lining separate, and I think that's important because I think so often people try to stitch all the way around, and certainly on fleece, it's going to grow a little bit. You're going to end up with a bit of a pulling. So yeah. leave the, uh, this separate, and then you're all set to go, and that's what sewing is all about. This is really nice, Linda. Quick really, and easy really and nice. fast. And a beginner could be doing this, mm -hmm. and an advanced mm -hmm. sewer could be doing mm -hmm. it. And wouldn't you impress your friends and neighbors? When you're wearing this. Well, that's what we do. We, then we go out and share. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we do. Okay, it's well, I hope share. that we've got you inspired and I hope that you're set because you too could do this. Now you've got your machine, you're all set. So get going and get sewing. We're coming right back with some embroidery. It's embroidery time again, and I'm delighted to say I'm joined with Eileen, who wrote the, not the book, the magazine. <laughs> and how long is your magazine? I mean, you've been. Oh. Doing it for a while now. We're about to celebrate our fifth anniversary this January. Super, super. And what I like, love about you is that you dream and eat and sleep and do this whole thing, and then you do it for the magazine, and, I mean, mm -hmm. you know what you're talking about. Yeah, and we're that's, pretty much addicted. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Okay, I think the topic today is that I'm going to ask you, can you embroider on anything? Almost, you know. Like any fabric? Any fabric, uh, leather, and even wood. What do you mean, wood? The lightweight balsa wood ladies have been embroidering on. Chris, you don't wear it well. But, <laughs> Wood's you know. kind of tough to wear. Okay, so you can do this on anything. Mm -hmm. And you can do letters. Yes, you can do lettering, and you can do high nap fabrics also, which present, you know, some interesting problems. And that's what you've got today, is that you've mm -hmm. got kind of a fun fur. Right. Mm -hmm. Lots of holiday wear and, you know, home decorative items for holiday have, you know, this fake fur. Yes, and, yes, you know, yes. it presents problems. Number one, it's stretchy. Okay. And also, it has that high uh, nap. Okay. okay, so what are we going to do? Okay, we're going to start with a strip of the fur, and we're going to hoop it in a sticky yeah. stabilizer. Mm -hmm. So the, the stabilizer is on, on the, the back of the hoop. Yeah. Okay. This is centered. Then I'm going to go and, on my machine, pull up uh, a font. Okay. And punch in my lettering, you know, yeah. whatever so I wanted to say. Infinite number of fonts. Yes. Anything. Ho, 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 maybe a family name. Okay. Yeah. You know, now be careful when you select it that you're hooping properly because you could wind up with, instead of ho, 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 oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Well, that's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. I think we'd go, we'd go mm -hmm. with that. So what next? Okay. On top of our um, fur, we want to put another water soluble stabilizer. And that enables the stitches to lay up on top of okay. the fur. Yeah, sure. And we're going to stitch it twice. Okay. The first time will be rather light, and then after you repeat it, uh, the stitches are more dense. Okay. Then, then they're kind of hidden. I think that's they what you're are say. right. And you know you have to remember to you know cut these uh, running off, stitches sure, sure, as sure. when you remove this, mm -hmm. and then we have to get rid of all this fur. And I and, see what you're going to use. Yeah, and I, I think... have a really fun tool called a stitch eraser, but it's just like a mustache trimmer. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to go in and actually go and remove some of this nap. Now this gets a little messy. So, you, you know, sometimes it's best to do it right over a trash can. Get the husband to do it. That's it. You know, yeah. you're out of time. I'll just leave you doing that. It's been fun. Thank you for joining us, and we're going to have fun all over again next time. See you then.
To receive the companion book for this series, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee.